It's story time. Good morning and welcome. It's story time. I'm Kimberlyn with Life's Work Yoga. And as the the video was turning to go live, I noticed a typo because of course I'm always moving fast between tasks and objectives and agendas. Why? Because I have to practice slowing down. That's the challenge that hmm, continues to be probably my greatest obstacle is that I try to juggle multiple tasks at the same time, shifting gears quickly. And yet in that process, I get shit done for sure. But details are often missed while observing from that greater, broader perspective. And it's in fact the word perspective that got a a switcheroo in the letters as I quickly typed out the description for today. So the reason that that caught my attention is because I continue to make a commitment to move, right? Breathe, move, rest. It's one of my most basic mantras. In fact, it's the, the, the ground, the foundation of a program I called Yoga Living that is a proven system for not only building and cultivating a personal practice of daily movement, of daily yoga rituals, but fundamentally it's a program based on my own experience of living intimately with inspiration, maintaining access, gaining and expanding our fluidity with inspiration so that we can breathe deeply and move freely, labor lovingly, and ultimately live vibrantly. That's, that's my mission, that's my dharma, that's my life's work here at Life's Work Yoga. And so story time is one of those windows where I try to bring together the story of living life in a modern world with the principles and teachings of yoga, the ancient practice of rituals of breathing, moving and resting, also known as asana, pranayama and meditation. So the story I want to share with you today is actually a story that has kind of been sprinkled through my whole life. One of the things, one of the practices that I added to my morning ritual as a result of COVID-19 and the stay at home order early back in March was studying the Russian language on a daily basis through an app on my phone. I'm currently using Duolingo to study Russian. And the reason that I study Russian is because I have this long-standing love for the people and the culture of Russia. It actually dates way back to my years in elementary school. And I am a product of of learning in the public schools how to duck and cover in preparation for what was at that time thought to be a Russian nuclear bomb. Now, one of my dear friends from elementary school actually began a correspondence with then uh, Yuri Dropov, the leader of the Soviet Union, former Soviet Union. And as a result of her letter writing to inquire about why Russia would want to harm us, another nation. She was invited personally, she and her family, she and her, I think it was her dad who went with her, went to get a tour of the former Soviet Union. And then she came back, right, having done this tour and brought back with her an invitation to be a pen pal with other Russian children that she had met at the schools. Now, I'm not gonna say that that was a propaganda free event at all. I'm sure that there was a lot of pomp and circumstance and prep and even some closed doors behind the scenes work that had to happen to give the impression to my friend. Her name uh, was Samantha Smith and I say was because unfortunately she actually perished in a airplane accident not long after her trip to Russia. So. The reason that I share that story is because she and I used to ride the school bus together and we talked about our our fears for sure, but also a basic humanity that we couldn't understand why this other population, how they could be so different 
to want harm. Now, I'm not saying that that was an adult conversation by any means, but it laid the foundation that our words matter and our actions as a way to make those thoughts and words tangible can make a difference on our world. So much so, I corresponded with the pen pal for years after that exchange, went on and even studied Russian in my undergraduate years, was able to visit the now Soviet Union, Russia, when I was a senior in college. Got to tour for oh, about two and a half weeks that I was able to visit with students and families and tour the sites in Moscow and St. Petersburg. Now, all of that said, right, what continued to grow for me was a compassion for the humanity of this culture, of this nation. They were so generous and loving, even though in, in comparison to what we have here in the States, they have very, very little in the sense that their homes are small, their refrigerators are used very sparsely, their fixtures in their home. Now again, I'm working from my experience in 1990, January, December of 93 to January of 94 is when I was visiting. So the fact that now almost, <laughs> what is that, I don't even know, 20 some years later, Russia and the Russian language reminds me of the people, the babushkas that before I departed, gave me a treat, um, food to take on my all night train when I traveled from St. Petersburg to Moscow and, and did their ritual blessing, their family's ritual blessing at the door to wish me safe travels and to keep me safe until we could meet again. And growing up in a religious, a, a Catholic family of regular ritual visiting to the church and, and completing of the sacraments, prayer and blessing was not new to me. And yet this notion of a stranger laying a blessing over me after having only known me for about 72 hours that I stayed in their home, shared their meals, which by the way, was mostly baked potatoes. I think I was served three baked potatoes and I'm not, I'm not kidding that they were like this big, three baked potatoes for one meal. I've never eaten three baked potatoes in one meal ever except for there. So the generosity, the, the compassion and the kindness that I received, not only from this family, but from the students that I met and the other tour guides and the bus driver and everyone that we, we associated with was so welcoming and so encouraging as one of about 12 students who were traveling with this trip. I was the only student who knew enough of the language. So although we had a professional translator, I played the role of the translator for the translator in order to kind of link or mediate between some of our incomplete knowledge and our inaccuracies of interpretation. And that role enhanced my confidence of the language, but also my confidence that the human connection the storytelling is the most powerful message. So at this point, since March, I have been daily practicing Russian language through the Duolingo app for, I think, 268 days. <laughs> I missed one day. Um, and so it's not giving me an accurate track on the Duolingo uh, record keeping. But in March, I started this journey to rekindle an old flame for not only the study of language, but the appreciation of a culture. And honestly, it has helped me keep some distance of hope, some perspective of shift, even in the turmoil of our international disputes, whether it's China or Russia or any other nation that perhaps we have some political or even human rights disagreements with. The bottom line is that we're talking about humans making decisions. Yes, they're imperfect. Yes, they're sometimes even swayed by ego and false information or selfishness. But at the root of it all, 
Don't we all really just want to know love, to feel loved, and to have a connection that is authentic and true? Now, that's not to say that there's not sociopaths in the world, but my point is we have to practice compassion. We have to live in accordance with our values, and that is the practice of yoga that begins by simply choosing to breathe consciously, to move not only the, the air over my vocal cords as I speak, but to move my body and to move the ideas in my head, to rearrange them until they align not only with hope, but they align with truth. And in that space, we can begin to peel back the layers of protection and defense that keep us from shining our light fully, that keep us from showing up to live more intimately with one another, which begins, honestly, begins by living intimately with our own connection to inspiration, our own connection to prana. And that, my friends, honestly, is the root of the Inspired Living program, which begins with yoga living, a six-month journey to explore, breathe, move, rest, as not only a practice on the mat, but a practice in living more intimately with inspiration and living more fully on a day-to-day -day basis, connecting through storytelling, through contact, whether it's digital or in real time, so that we can see our own humanity and the humanity of others. I hope that you breathe deeply today and that you can move freely, whether it's in your physical space or in your mental, emotional heart space. Let the shift begin to tug at your heart strings to help you show up more fully, more authentically, and find the alignment to be your best self. May you be well. Thank you for allowing me to share this brief story. And I encourage you to share your story, share your questions, your challenges. How is it that yoga is helping you to live your best life? Or the other side of that, where are you most challenged? And perhaps there is some yogic training, yogic wisdom that I can offer you to help you realign, to find that hope to live in the truth, to find the inspiration to be your best self. Take care and I'll see you soon. Namaste.